presented by H-E-B. No store does more than my H-E-B. By Jack in the Box, the Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack is back. Taste it now at Jack in the Box. And by Southwest Airlines, transparency, low fares, nothing too high. The Houston Astros trying to grab a win from the Yankees before they leave town today. It's the series finale, and the Astros are looking at Lance McCullers, who loves to pitch here right at Minute Maid Park. The Astros hope to be leaning on this right-hander for years to come, and we'll talk about him coming up next on Root Sports. Don't go anywhere. First pitch is coming up. It's the final time the Astros and Yankees will match up this season. Astros trying to get a win here tonight to avoid the sweep. They've lost two in a row, not something they've done a lot here lately. So they're looking for a stopper. And tonight they're looking at Lance McCullers, a guy who hopes to be that one day for this team for years to come. He wants to be the guy to turn things around for the team. And he's coming off a great pitching performance. It's our pitching performance powered by Kubota, actually, against the Angels. He was dominant in that outing. Struck out 10, got Mike Trout just swinging three different times. And he had a chance at a complete game shutout. But he ended up walking the first two batters in the ninth. Harris finishing the job for him. Pitch count was up there, though, for Lance McCullers. And A.J. Hinch gave him an opportunity to get that complete game. It was a moment bigger than beating the Angels at that moment. And he's felt really good here lately. He's on a roll. There's a lot of things working for him. You're seeing his last six right there with the 221 ERA, better fastball command. But I want to toss this up to Alan Ashby. This team seems to be developing an anchor in the rotation for years to come here. And 22 years old, what can outings like his last one do for the young right-hander? Yeah, Julia, and, and you and I heard A.J. Hinch talk about McCullers in that regard and that particular start, the last one against the Angels. A.J. said he's trying to, to grow a man and not a boy here. That was the reasoning in allowing him to pitch into the ninth inning, a guy that has a chance to be one of those anchors of a rotation. Dallas Keuchel is back being one of those as well, but you love to have as many as you can, and the stuff of Lance McCullers can dominate major league hitters. Ten strikeouts twice over his last four starts. Lance McCullers has as good a curveball as you'll find in the game right now. Starting lineup for the New York Yankees left fielder Brett Gardner center fielder Jacoby Ellsbury D.H. Carlos Beltran catcher Brian McCann first baseman Mark Teixeira shortstop D.D. Gregorius second baseman Starlin Castro third baseman Chase Headley right fielder Aaron Hicks pitcher Masahiro Tanaka. First time McCullers has ever faced the New York Yankees as you might have noticed his dad was a Yankee. 
McCullers though off that game Julia talked about really comes into this one with a full head of steam. Brett Gardner gets it going. He takes in their strike one at 93. Gardner at 256 has six homers, 24 runs batted in, but he's hitting 083 against the Astros, one for 12. That's in for strike two. Ramon De Jesus is the home plate umpire. Alex Bregman, the third baseman, backs up much deeper with two strikes in the count. Gardner has been known to bunt. Curveball struck him out. Now there we go, right back to what Lance does so well. Left hand hitters have surprisingly hit pretty well 280 against Lance the change would help a great deal as we look at our MD Anderson strike zone Lance McCullers filling it up early. Jacoby Ellsbury is the batter. Ellsbury had a good game last night with three hits. 269 four homers 31 runs batted in he said only 205 since the All Star break. Altuve to his right. Two outs. Well, Lance, who's had some first inning difficulties this year, that is a very efficient way to start the game. Four pitches, two outs. Throwing nothing but strikes right now. And if he can get his fastball in the, into the strike zone, should help him enormously. And then if he can add the change up to the left hand bats in particular, get to where he can dominate those guys as well as the righties. Carlos Beltran has had a big month of July. In tight ball one to a 309 hitter with 21 homers, 62 runs batted in. He's hit 333 against the Astros this season. He is four for nine in this series. Line to Bregman for out number three. What an efficient first inning for Lance McCullers. One, two, three. Starting lineup for A.J. Hinch brought to you by Southwest Airlines. The D.H. George Springer leads it off with Marlon Gonzalez at first base. Jose Altuve at second. Carlos Correa the shortstop the cleanup man. He's followed by right fielder Colby Rasmus. Left fielder Preston Tucker. Third baseman Alex Bregman. Center fielder Carlos Gomez. Catcher Jason Castro. And on the mound for the Yankees. Masahiro Tanaka. Never beaten the Astros. Couple of. Career starts 10 innings overall and the Astros have done OK against him. Some of the guys Altuve included hitting 333 but Tanaka on his year 7 and 2 he's pitched quite well in his last couple of starts 21st start of the year. Shut out ball last time out against the Giants for six innings. He won that one three to two. George Springer gets it started. And it's ball one to Springer, a 260 hitter with 22 homers to lead the club. 
60 runs batted in. He has scored 73 runs this year. Career highs in homers and runs batted in already for George. Tanaka threads it in over the outside edge for strike one. Springer's one for eight in this series. He had a seven game hitting streak that was snapped last night and he had a six game RBI streak snapped last night. Strike for Tanaka one and two. Tanaka in two major league seasons prior to this one was an all star in 2014 13 and five last year 12 and seven. Lost to Dallas Keuchel in the wild card game last October. And on opening day. The Astros. Went out with Keuchel on the mound against Tanaka. A no decision for Masahiro five and two thirds innings two earned runs allowed. He left with the game tied 2 2. Springer fouls it back. But he is tough. And really tough on the road where he leads the major leagues with an ERA of 150. That's with. 60 or more innings this year, but just dominating for whatever reason in nine starts on the road. He gets a punch out. Certainly not dominating with velocity, just up to 87 miles an hour on the heater. With that road ERA. Have to go back to Ron Gedry, 1978. He had a 1.69 ERA on the road for a full season. For the last Yankee pitcher to have a road ERA under two. Marwin Gonzalez had the biggest night of his career in terms of two homers in a game last night, and they came from each side of the plate. In the air, the shortstop, Gregorius, handles out number two. Jose Altuve following. Yankee pitching has been solid this series. Yankees won two to one Monday night. Michael Pineda pitched perhaps his finest game of the season, giving up one run in seven innings. CC Sabathia was the winner for the Yankees last night, 6-3, giving up two runs in six and two-thirds innings. And the bullpen is among the best around. Altuve with 17 homers, 60 runs batted in, carries a 355 average. That's tops in the majors. And he fouls it. There's strike one. Typically, that good pitching will come along with when a team's playing well. The Yankees, winners in 8 of 10 right now, so they've turned it on. Altuve is 2 for 6 with a homer against Tanaka. This season against the Yankees, he's three for 19. He gets a knock between third and short, and Altuve is aboard with a two out single, hit number 141. You can find that hole on the left side with the best of them. And then when they move the shortstop in that direction, he'll shoot it right back up the middle. Looks like the Astros hitters might be out in front just a bit on Tanaka at this point. Carlos Correa, the club RBI leader, was 64. As Altuve at first and two outs. Looking for his first hit in this series. He's 0 for 5. Altuve starts and stops, and there's strike one call. Correa's hit three long balls against the Yankees. Altuve with 25 steals in 29 attempts is second in the American League now in steals. He's been leading most of the year. The Astros are five for five in steals against the Yankees and there's the throw over to first by Tanaka. Brian McCann has thrown out 23 percent of those attempting to steal. Correa with 31 runs batted in since June 20th is second in the majors behind Albert Pujols who has 33. Gregorius on to second to Castro for the force on Altuve no runs a hit and a man left no score after one.
advantage is presented by Lowe's. Les McCullers has had an advantage seemingly when he pitches right here at Minute Maid Park in 18 career starts eight and three great ERA just over the two mark opposition not swinging it very well against him he's keeping the ball in the yard and not putting a whole lot of guys on base and the first inning promising tonight. Brian McCann looks at ball one as the second inning opens 234 for McCann 14 homers 40 runs batted in six for 15 against Houston pitching. Can takes an inside breaker and it's two and oh. McCann one for four in last night's game. Brian's 32 years old, a second round pick by the Braves in 02 from Athens, Georgia. And the count goes to two and one. Well, the Braves and the Texas Rangers made a trade today. Lucas Harrell, the former Astro, involved going from Atlanta to Texas along with the lefty reliever. And Harrell will go into the Texas rotation and replace Nick Martinez. He'll start Sunday against Kansas City. Harrell was two and two with a 3.380 RA for the Braves in five starts. And for a strike, and it's two and two. The Rangers also will uh, welcome the lefty reliever Dario Alvarez into their bullpen. Struck him out. Right back to the Yacker for the strikeout. He throws it so hard and people talk about spin rates. He's he develops it extremely well and you striking out a guy like Brian McCann with a swing like that you are putting on something special. Mark Teixeira two hits and a walk last night three sixteen against the Astros with seven runs batted in for Teixeira. Fouls it back there is strike one. Mark two for eight in this series. McCullers, 22 years old, born in Tampa, Florida. The Yankees have trained for many years there. He probably was able to sneak into some spring training games down through the years. Oh, and two. Idolized Robinson Cano. Kind of uh, an interesting concept of would be pitcher liking that other guy. Into left field for an opposite field single for to share up. With the shift on, he got it by Bregman. Bregman was where the shortstop often plays. He had no chance to get that one. Gregorius will bat. Bit of a hanger with the curveball there. Not a big swing from Teixeira. Gregorius. It's been quite a nice surprise offensively for the Yankees. 296, 11 homers, 43 runs batted in, 368 against Houston pitching. He's used all fields this year. Looking at ball one, two for eight with an RBI in this series. Didi is 26 years old. He was born in Amsterdam. Signed by Cincinnati in 08 as a free agent. Gregorius works the count to 2 and 0 with Castro on deck. Yankees are going for a sweep of this three game series. They'll be off tomorrow as will the Astros. Then New York will be playing over the weekend at Tampa Bay. Yankees are 23 and 26 on the road. Popped up a shallow left field Tucker comes over for it. Two down. Yes, you talk about the Yankees and their recent uh, heating up as a team. Three out of four against Baltimore, two out of three against the Giants, and now taking the first two against the Astros. So it looks like the Yankees are kind of making a response to are they buyers or sellers? It does. They've improved in every month so far. They left plenty of room for improvement by going eight and 14 in April, but then in May there were 16 and 15. In June 15 and 12, 13 and 9 in July so far. 261 for Castro, 11 homers. He's driven in 40. Correa watches as Bregman moves over in front of him and makes that play on the short toss over to second. Nothing, nothing.
wild card. The Astros had to go into New York that one game playoff to beat the Yankees at Dallas Keuchel on the hill. He was great but the long balls helped as well. Colby Rasmus launched one to get the Astros ahead as they went on to win at three nothing. Carlos Gomez was a contributor as well as he went yard and so it was that game Keuchel and some power as the Astros moved on into the postseason. Now Colby Rasmus trying to snap an 0 for 28. Take strike one. Colby at 226 has 11 homers, 43 runs batted in. This is his first plate appearance in this series. He is two for 39 this month. Hitless in his last seven games. That ties his career long hitless streak. He did that in 2010. One ball, one strike. He's been ill along the way. That was a few weeks ago, but just has not been able to get a whole lot going here in the month of July. He's 0 for 5 against Tanaka this regular season. And last, fouling that one away. 0 and 2. You mentioned the two regular season starts for Tanaka against the Astros, so they haven't seen a whole lot of him. Infielders shift around with Headley going to the right of second base and Gregorius stays over there on the left. That's the way they do it out of the shift. In tight two and two Tanaka really has good knowledge of how to execute pitches coming from Japan. He has a 5.26 career ratio of strikeouts to walks. Third highest in the modern era. Strike three. Second strikeout. And he's 27 years old, Ash. Yeah, he's a painter, too, and he'll work the edges like this. Gets a little piece of the baseball on the strike zone, and you should get that call. But that's the way he tries to work it. Has that great splitter. We haven't seen a tremendous evidence of it tonight. Preston Tucker is one for six in this series. 192 for the season, four homers, seven runs batted in, 286 since his recall from the minors. Laying off, and there's ball one. Left handed hitters have not hit as well, actually, five points less than right handed hitters against Tanaka. He's stingy 235 batting average overall against him. It's one and one. The Astros as a team. Kind of strange tendencies. They're hitting 400 when they're ahead in the count tops in the majors. They're hitting 169 when behind in the count worst in the majors. Two and one. I think a lot of times that might mean good fastball hitters and have struggled against the off speed. Don't know that that's specifically the case here. You know, we might have to run some numbers on that. Let's see how that bears out. Three and one to Preston Tucker. We'll see how Tuve handles everything. George Springer has shown a lot of power in the last couple of months on off speed. But I would say in general it, it probably plays the other way. Well our good buddy Jeff Plum will be running those numbers for Friday night's telecast from Detroit. You know that computer spinning already. There's a walk to Tucker. Tanaka has only walked 26 in 130 innings. 2016 Coca-Cola Astros Buddies memberships are on sale right now for only 25 bucks. Buddies members get a voucher for four tickets to an Astros game, VIP access to kids run the bases, exclusive autograph sessions, and more. Memberships for kids up to 12 years of age are available by visiting Astros.com slash buddies. Alex Bregman is 0 for 7 as a major leaguer. His ball one to Bregman. Many family and friends have come from various parts of the country to see him after he hit 333 at Triple A Fresno. Prior to that, he was at Double A Corpus Christi. Looking for that first major league hit for the third straight night. He 
has drawn a walk. He's been up against some tough pitching. And it's 2 0. Bregman worked that walk last night in the eighth inning against the hard throwing right hander Dellen Batances. Nearly hit a grand slam here Monday night. The ball was caught on the warning track in the sixth inning in right field. It's 3 0 to Bregman. Not his overall best swing, might have been his first at bat in the big leagues when he just got under one to left field. Chance to really drive it out, but he's had some good swings. Carlos Gomez is on deck. In for a strike, 3 1. So the man he followed most closely of all major league players, Derek Jeter, wore that number two so well. As the Yankee captain now, the Bregman fans want their number two to deliver. Three and two. There's what you get in the big leagues. You get a guy like Tanak on the hill, and on a three one, he's able to come splitter to the plate. Maybe slider. Who would have been the slide piece and leaves Bregman out in front. Tucker does not have a big lead with one out. He goes. It's ball four. Bregman and Tucker have back to back walks, and now it's Carlos Gomez. Gomez at 214 has five homers, 28 runs batted in. Carlos is three for eight in this series. He had two hits last night. He is two for four in his career against Tanaka. Jason Castro's on deck. Ground ball wide of third. You talked about it in that playoff game in New York against Dallas Keuchel. Tanaka surrendered homers to Rasmus and Gomez. Keuchel was on such a roll. Just put something on the board for him and he would likely protect it. Correa homered off him. Opening day at Yankee Stadium this year. And also hit one off him last year. Ground ball foul again. 0 and 2. The Astros are ninth in runs scored in the American League. They have not hit as well at home as on the road this year. But they have pitched very well in this ballpark. And they're 31 and 21 here. They've won 21 of their last 29 at Minute Maid Park. Up the middle. In the center field. Tucker to the plate. Bregman to third. RBI single for Gomez. This ground ball gets a piece of the glove, I believe, of Tanaka. And it maybe changed the spin on the ground ball. It looked like Gregorius struggled a bit, taking a look now at the Super Bowl presented by Mattress Firm. Gomez stayed on the ball well, kept his head down. But as the ball goes by the mound, it seemed to change the direction of the bounce. Gregorius came up shy, and the Astros maybe catch a break there. Yeah, he may have applied that spin with his glove. You're right. Couldn't tell how much leather, if any, he got on it, but it did appear that the ball changed course a little bit. Jason Castro, who became a first baseman because of the injury to Luis Valbuena last night, acquitted himself well. 216, six homers, 23 runs batted in. He's 0 for 14 against the Yankees. Gomez takes off. No throw from McCann. He looks back at third. There's the steal from Gomez, his 12th and 14 tries.
McCann can throw from behind the plate too. So it's always risky business when you're running with him back there. Castro's 0 for 4 against Tanaka. George Springer on deck. Strike makes it one and one. The Yankees, of course, by winning the first two games of this series, uh, have tagged the Astros with a home series loss. It's only their second loss in a home series since the May 20th through 22nd three game series with Texas here. The Rangers swept that one. In for a strike and it's one and two. And Jason had to find a first baseman's mitt last night in all the shuffle with Valbuena getting hurt and the Astros had only Tucker and Rasmus on the bench besides Castro so Jason who had played first base in college got a mitt that had been used last year by Chris Carter. Passed along to Valbuena did a nice job he did. Struck him out. Number three for Tanaka. I think Jason took a second strike in that sequence that he'd love to have back. First pitch, first strike, rather, was a tough pitch down and away. But then the second strike, you can see number three right in the heart of the plate, and he wound up taking it. George Springer, who struck out in the first inning, will have this RBI opportunity now. Oakland got two in the first and leads at Texas two nothing after one and a half against you Darvish. Big cut there's strike one our good buddy Astros radio broadcaster Steve Sparks was telling us before the game that Darvish has terrible career numbers against the Oakland A's. Got to get Bob Brent or not Bob Brentley, Bob Melvin to spill the beans there. Yeah, get to get the story on how they've been able to do that. Marwin Gonzalez is on deck. Strike to Springer and it's 0 and 2 to George. George has been taking a number of fastball strikes that have been working in on him recently. I'm not sure. And none of the ball on the strike zone, so tough call. Toronto and Boston both lost in day games. Both of them ahead of the Astros in the wild card standings. George lays off and it's one and two. Boy, it's tight in that wild card right now. The Astros were two games back of the second wild card spot occupied by Boston when the day began. And they'll go to Detroit over the weekend, traveling tomorrow, but tomorrow's an off day. Well, the Tigers swept that three game series at Fenway Park to enhance their chances. McCann held it there. It's ball two and it's two and two. Case of McCann, the catcher setting up away and getting one back toward the inside edge. A lot of umpires are disinclined to call that a strike when it doesn't hit the catcher's original target. Got to watch it all the way through, though. Tanaka has allowed just one run in his last two starts combined, as Ash mentioned, covering 12 innings. When the Yankees get a quality start, their record is 33 and 13. Grounder Tanaka. And he limits the damage to one run on one hit. With two men left, Astros lead it one to nothing after two.
because this weekend the Astros will be in Detroit. You'll yeah. be watching. Yeah, I'll right. be watching. Quick little mini series. So. And now next week Toronto. Yeah. Comes in for four, followed by the Texas Rangers. So I think a lot of fans will be very interested in that week. Yeah, absolutely. We're we're looking forward to uh, a short little road trip for them, and then have everyone come back here for for the uh, Blue Jays and for the Rangers. Are you all caught up in this Pokemon craze right oh, now? Oh man, Bill. This is crazy. Yeah. It's so funny to see people just walking around with phones in front of them. And <laughs> um, but, you know, what's great is that we're bringing that here to Minute Maid Park um, next third or next Wednesday, August 3rd. Oh, against really? the Blue Jays. Yeah. So yeah. He, he's going to be here somewhere. Pokemon. Well, we've got Pokemon everywhere in the stadium. Apparently we uh, we're quite a hot spot. We got Pokestops, but we do have a great ticket package. Thirty dollar ticket package. It's also dollar hot dogs that night. So. And, uh, you know, a really great value proposition for folks coming out for that game uh, if they're interested. So it's going to be fun. There's a T-shirt that's involved with that ticket package, um, a unique little Pokeball with our Astros logo in it and Orbit antenna. Jake Marisnik has come in to play center field. There's a strikeout on Headley. And it's strikeout number three. So with uh, Gomez having come to the plate, uh, getting a hit, driving in a run, stealing a base, evidently a uh, Something happened perhaps with a leg but there's Marisnik in center field. We don't have uh, any announcement on that. But Marisnik is out there with one down and here is Aaron Hicks batting now. So Pokemon uh, next Wednesday the yep. third against the Blue Jays and that is uh, really an important series. The Blue Jays just ahead of the Astros in the wild card race. Bouncer there's Altuve to his left. And that's something a, a lot of people shoot for with the dollar hot dogs anyway. But now they get a bonus of a great pennant race game and, and Pokemon night. And Pokemon, I mean, you can't not, you can't, you have to be there. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're looking forward to it. You now we've seen uh, so many of the kids involved with this Astros Buddies program, and that goes way, way back to the beginning of the franchise, I think, almost. But yeah. It's uh, so fun with that program that there are so many people that write in who say, you know, they had Jimmy Wynn as their Astros buddy. And it's a program that's been around for a really long time. And, and he's here tonight. Did you see? I did in his his typical spots over there in the Crawford boxes. So it's always fun to see him. You bet. Brett Gardner with ball one. Yeah, somebody put a Twitter pick out there with Jimmy Wynn. So that's uh, always a great asset for the fans to be able to interact with him when he comes out. And, we know uh, school is going to be creeping back into the picture here in another month or so. So yeah. So with that buddies program it's an awesome value proposition there too. And back to school we part of the program is you get a Astros backpack and Astros buddies backpack. So um, you know as you're thinking about back to school for those parents it's a it's a great program to look into. You get Astros tickets um, twenty five dollar membership for kids twelve and twelve and under. So definitely encourage folks to check that out. You bet. It's fun watching the little kiddos run around. Now uh, once upon a time we got a brick uh, as part of that program that was the first year of the franchise right. Yeah. Yeah. We started our commemorative brick program when uh, Minute Maid well when Minute Maid ballpark opened up we uh, we started our commemorative brick paper program. 16 years though. I know a lot of bricks. So, <laughs> so if you weren't around 16 years ago you can still join the party. Yeah absolutely. Bricks are on sale all year and it's a really unique way to commemorate an occasion a birthday a moment in time. Um, you know a lot of a lot of great messages out there some proposals we've had a, a few proposals via break <laughs> surprisingly enough I think one of might have happened tonight actually Ooh. Altuve dives check this out he is safe though it's a great effort by Altuve there's so much wanted to get Gardner at first but Gardner is safe with a two out single you got to love this hustle here I mean it's unreal he's Fantastic. He's the real deal, Bill. Is he your favorite? He's one of my favorites. I just love his work ethic. He just goes out there and he puts everything into every game that he plays. Gardner gets hit number two for the Yankees, despite the best efforts of number 27. He's just so dynamic to watch. Yeah. I love when he sticks his tongue out. <laughs> <laughs> his signature Altuve. That and biting the nails, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ellsbury, this one off the mid of Castro, and Gardner will advance on a wide ball one. 
Then uh, Legends Weekend coming up. We know that uh, that's going to be very big around here because the Texas Rangers are here and Mike Scott and Alan Ashby are here. Yeah. We're excited to have them uh, for, for, yeah, Legends Weekend next weekend presented by Houston Methodist. There's a lot of really great things coming up for the Friday, Saturday with some great giveaways. Um, so looking forward to talking about that uh, in the next week or so. Yeah, you'll be on next Wednesday night to yeah. give us all the latest stuff there. And uh, I would imagine it would be a really good idea for folks to get their tickets lined up right now for that Ranger weekend. Absolutely. Definitely encouraging people to get their tickets, come out to the ballpark early. And, you know, got some great giveaways. Want to encourage people to get here for those so they don't miss out. 10,000 fans get those giveaways. So Friday and Saturdays are the, the giveaways presented by Methodist. So. Good breaking pitch to Ellsbury makes it two and one. It's a big game tonight, Brianna. Yeah. Yankees are always a, a great competitor, and we're, we're excited to have them in the house, and hopefully we'll get a W here tonight. It's a hard-fought series the way they've been playing, and they're okay. not out of the mix yet either. No. It's a tight race right now. Two balls, two strikes. Nothing like the, the continuity of a baseball season for that, though, right? Absolutely. Still a lot of baseball left. A lot of bait. Well, this is game number 101. 101. So All right, we broke 100. You have 62 more games in you this year? Absolutely. <laughs> I have way <laughs> more than 62. Yeah. That's Let's just keep this going. <laughs> You've got 62 <laughs> more years in here. Right? Yeah, we don't need to stop now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if fans are excited, I mean, it's a great time to be an Astros fan, and season tickets just went on sale, so we're uh, for 2017, which is which is great. So. Definitely encouraging fans to get out there and, and check out our season ticket sales for, for 2017. Yeah, you know, that's a thought because this could be another year with postseason coming up. So uh, the demand would be even greater. If you get it now, you get in ahead of some of that demand, right? What, what else exactly. would be what would be the benefits of doing that now? So 2017, if you get your season tickets, um, you also get the option to purchase for the 2016 postseason, which is a huge benefit. Um, for those purchasers, uh, you know, I think we have a really great chance of getting into the postseason. So we're we're excited to offer that benefit for those folks. Well, going to let you look at this one. Oh, yeah. That seemed to be right on the borderline, right? Yeah, Lance didn't look happy about that one. Now he'll be making a 3-2 pitch. And a big one with Carlos Beltran on deck. So Ellsbury figures to see something to swing at here. And he took ball four. Well, that was a close one to take, and Tough maybe one. a little too close to take. Crab not too happy about that one. Well, Lance felt he made a pitch. You could see by his reaction, and also Castro and AJ Hinch really scorched about that one because now Beltran comes up with two men on. He lined to Bregman his first time up. The way he's been hitting, he would be the Yankee that many people would least want to face in this situation. I have faith in Lance. <laughs> Nothing like a positive thought. And for strike one. You know, it does change the whole thought process, though, for a battery. With Castro and McCullers here, when you're not getting calls on the borderline, it just faces you to come in, uh, forces you to come in and catch more of the white part of home plate, and that does leave a little more to chance against a good hitter. Fastball mm -hmm. fouled away, 0 oh and 2. Bill, I have to ask, have you gotten into this Pokemon craze? Well, my grandson is into it. Ah. Yeah, so sort of vicariously, yes, hearing a lot about it. So you have the app. Is that I what you're telling me? I don't have the you app. You don't have the app. Are you telling me I need to get it? Um, yeah, okay. I think you should. And maybe work on the data plan as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you struck him out. Thanks, Brianna, for joining us. Thanks, Brownie. Appreciate it. Strike out number four. McCullers got it done. One nothing, Houston.
Houston Astros are hitting home runs for Houston. How about the guys that have had the most multi homer games in the history of the franchise Jeff Bagwell leads that's pretty predictable followed by Lance Berkman Craig Vigil and Jimmy Wynn who happens to be in the house tonight. That's a great list of names for guys with those multi homer games. Marwin Gonzalez had one of those last night one from each side of the plate. And each pretty much no doubt shots. Now he comes up for the second time Jimmy Wynn in attendance along with his lovely wife Marie. There is ball one to Margo. Well, it's always fun to be around him. He's got so many great stories. The Toy Cannon. One of the fabulous nicknames in baseball. Marwin popped a short his first time up. We had a lot of questions on Twitter while we were chatting with uh, Brianna asking, uh, why did Gomez leave the game? We have not had an announcement on that. First Astro to homer from both sides of the plate in a game since Lance Berkman in 06 against the Cubs. One and two assuming and we have no right to assume but we'll guess leg injury on Gomez right. I, that's the only thing I, I could guess on that kind of a play after stealing second base you would have thought he was feeling pretty good. Yep. You don't happen to know who dubbed Jimmy win the toy cannon do you. Um. I think it was a sports writer for the Houston Post and I, he's told this story again but I cannot remember the name of the sports writer and he was around here for a long time that sports writer. So yes it was not one of his teammates. But a very good nickname a liner in the right field. That was a bullet. And Marwin's on to lead it off here in the home third with hit number three for the Astros. That swing right now from the left side for Marwin Gonzalez is short, compact, and powerful. He is stinging the baseball. Watch how quickly he gets through the zone. Right down through the ball. That's a career high 11 game hitting streak, as you might have seen. Astro laid out for it. It was by him very quickly. Well hit ball. Altuve singled in the first inning. Career high on the hitting streak for Marwin Gonzalez. Oh, we're seeing that it was Mickey Herskowitz of the Houston Post who nicknamed him Toy Cannon. Hicks coming over for the foul ball. I guess that would would have been predictable. Um, well I didn't of course I didn't know it was Mickey but uh, Mickey's a good friend. Well that's a great job but you know you come up with one of those golden nuggets every I don't know how often but that was a great one. Yeah Mickey's written 50 some odd books. He can turn a phrase. Runner going. Altuve chops at it, grounds to Gregorius. Gonzalez to second on out number one. We don't see a lot of hit and runs. Not in not with the Astros, not with Major League Baseball anymore. It's more about guys on the move and hitter swings when he wants, but that would have appeared to be a hit and run. Yep. Altuve swinging on a pitch that was not in the strike zone. That's right. With that kind of a swing, it looked as if he felt obligated to swing. Now Correa is the batter. Correa bounced into a force play in the first inning. Carlos Correa, a couple of career home runs already against Tanaka. Last June going the other way right here at Minute Maid Park. And then opening day this year. And he had it flying in that opening series against the Yankees. So twice the other way against Tanaka. Rasmus is on deck.
in the dirt that skips by McCann Morrow into third with one out. Wild pitch. Watch McCann. It's another one of those cases where he just simply didn't get the blocking game in order there. He was trying to pick it out of the dirt backhanded. Now the infield comes in for Joe Girardi. Two to nothing Houston RBI single Carlos Correa through a drawn in infield that's his 65th run batted in. Better take advantage when the opportunities are presented and that's what Carlos Correa has been doing. Saw the home runs have gone the other way but he got one working toward the inside edge. He got the head out. He's got just a perfect. Style there as he gets through the hitting zone. Everything is ideal. That's hit number four for Houston. Correa coming through. Rasmus is going to try to build on that. He struck out looking in the second inning. Well, the Yankee pitching in this series has been excellent. And with Tanaka's 1.50 road ERA, the Astros. Are working some things on him with the leadoff single by Gonzalez, then the apparent hit and run ground ball advancing him. He took third on the wild pitch and scored on another hit. And they play some small ball. It's uh, not anything to assume that there's going to be a big inning against Tanaka this year. His ERA 3.00 coming into this one. And so the Astros have been scratching out. The first two runs, Ash. And as we mentioned, the most recent two starts for Tanaka, he's been on the money, so he's been tough coming in. By the way, a controversy brewing. Ken Hoffman from the Chronicle tells us that it was John Wilson. You know, yeah, I thought it was John Wilson. That's the name I couldn't think of. But somebody sent us uh, Mickey Herskowitz on Twitter. Yeah, but John Wilson is the uh, sports writer who's been credited by uh, Jimmy Wynn when I've heard him talk about it. With giving him that nickname. So that's a big thanks to Ken Hoffman. Yep. One ball, one strike. Nothing like those uh, upper deck seats in the Astrodome with uh, the toy cannon logo on one of them where he hit that upper deck homer and then the red rooster on another one where Doug Raider hit an upper deck home run. They're gold seats. And just fantastic. You mean those seats that were filled every time Randy Johnson pitched? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, they were. Boy, did he fill up the Astrodome in 1998 after that trade from Seattle. It was a fun time. Oh, great time. And uh, interesting that we talk about that. Uh, this is about that same time of year that uh, the Astros made the Randy Johnson deal. And who knows what's being considered of anything right now by the Astros brass. Oh. High drive, right center field. Colby Rasmus has broken out of it. There goes the 0 for 29. He hits a two run shot number 12 of the year and it's four to nothing. And that could prove useful. Very nice snap out in a big way. Tanaka typically works down changes speed in the strike zone. Looked like he got one up. Two one pitch. Rasmus hits his 12th of the year, giving him 45 runs batted in. Sweet swing for Colby. Time for a little Colby Jack. And it's Preston Tucker with strike one. 
That's a refreshing snack this time of night, and he had to really enjoy that one. Kobe Jack for all, are you saying? Yep. Top to first base and foul for Mark to Sheriff. No balls, two strikes. Well, the Astros have hit 131 home runs this season. They rank fourth in the American League. Mark Teixeira with a look on his face as he glanced back to the first base umpire Greg Gibson like are you kidding me. I thought I saw that ball land behind the bag on the chalk. Yeah. Now that doesn't always mean it was fair going by the bag but can be an indicator. Well it did look a little bit like that from here. But Greg Gibson had a much better angle. Still 0 with 2 to Tucker. Tanaka's now surrendered 12 homers this year in 132 innings. The Astros hit three solo homers last night in the 6 3 loss. That one goes foul. George Springer hit a solo homer Monday night in the two to one loss. So for the first time in this game they scored a run without hitting a homer in the second inning and then get the two run shot from Rasmus their first homer in this series with a man on. Alex Bregman's on deck. Last hit for Rasmus was a homer against Seattle July 5th. Three weeks ago, Ash. One and two. I was just thinking that Colby, uh, he was just waiting until he had a well positioned at bat there with some, uh, at least somebody else on base. Just 29 at bats might, might find you with that opportunity. Yeah. Of course, he has sat out several games in that period of time since July 5th here against Seattle. He had an ear infection and some other issues. Two balls, two strikes. Well it becomes a little bit more of a meritocracy you might say for A.J. Hinch in terms of selecting his starting lineup now. With Alex Bregman on the scene and with the Cuban Ulyeski Gurriel coming in terms of uh, players earning at bats in this lineup. They're going to have to perform it would appear rolled out to third base a shortstop rather Gregorius with the throw gets him good play. Take a look at that shot by Colby Rasmus. Yes. Splitter stayed up in the strike zone and Colby gets wood to it, no doubt about it. There you go. Take that over 29. Yeah, you wonder if Carlos Gomez misses any amount of time right now. Who steps in as kind of the regular center fielder, or as you suggest, does it uh, become yeah. You're facing righty, facing lefty, right. whatever sets up for a given night. Alex Bregman looks at ball one. He walked in the second inning. Now, Alex Bregman could play some left field. I don't think, based on what I've heard, that he will be in line to play center this year, but it could happen next. Right. We've heard no talk about him playing center or right this year. Bregman gets underneath it. Here's Starlin Castro over toward the line and right. With the play to end it in the third, the Astros have a three run third, two coming on this swing by Rasmus. Home run number 12. And Houston leads it four to nothing.
club and much more with a tour of Minute Maid Park. For more info, visit astros.com slash tours or call 713-259-8996 to schedule your tour today. Lance McCullers back to work, throwing that curveball about 50% of the time, guys. And a Deep drive, Marisnik <laughs> way back in center field up against the wall, and that one gets out. A home run for McCann. It's now 4-1 to one as he hits his 15th of the year. That's a bomb out in that direction. And Jake Marisnik almost came down with bomb and glove. And he got back there very well. He might be hurting a little bit. Yeah, that, that's one of those plays that could leave you hurting. We'll get back to Julia right now so she can finish up. Julia? Thanks, Brownie. The, the curveball's been so good for him here lately, getting a lot of strikeouts on him, but he's throwing it so much. And he talked about this saying that last year was a little different for him. He wanted to see that break. He wanted it to be a nasty breaking pitch, but got a little less obsessed with it, as, or his words, with making it move, and now he wants it to look more like his fastball. So now he's got two different pitches. He's got the 82-83 with more break and the 86-87, but looks more like a heater out of his hand. Popped up by Teixeira back out of play. We got the announcement just now on Carlos Gomez. He left the game with a right hamstring injury. The same injury Luis Valbuena had last night. How weird is that on back to back nights? One and two. Saw no sign of Carlos hurting once he got down to second base. No, we didn't notice anything. Pretty good sign last night on Valbuena as he was laid out. Yeah, that was pretty obvious. Check swing call there by Mike Estabrook. Two and two. By the way, Valbuena was seeing Dr. David Lindner before the game tonight during batting practice, so we don't have a further update other than the fact that the Astros do not think that is a serious hamstring injury. He's not on the disabled list, so they are a man short in this game. Tomorrow's a day off for travel. Valbuena will be reevaluated on Friday in Detroit. But it appears that A.J. Hinch thinks that Valbuena might be available this weekend. And for a strike, to share a caught looking, five strikeouts. Now the peak of that home run by Brian McCann. He does have great power and extended awfully well on a pitch that might have been off the outside edge. Watch Jake go for it. Battling. He knows Towels Hill is going to be in the equation. And the ball got, got out by too much. But you want me on that wall, you need me on that wall. Jake was there to make that happen. Getting a little thin in the troops right now, so uh, hopefully he can stay healthy. There's ball one on Gregorius. He had a fly ball to left. Evan Gaddis is now the bench player in this game. One ball, one strike. Dollar hot dog night. There's another one coming up next Wednesday with the Toronto Blue Jays here. Bounced into right field. A hit for Gregorius. Julia? Hey, Brownie and Ash, you know, the short bench, this is what AJ was talking about before the game. He was actually asked, you know, you've got 12 position players, and he thought to, to maybe having the 13, having the 12 pitchers. And he said before the game, I like having the 13 pitchers uh, because you're, you're going to tax one of them either way. In this case, I, I like the way that we've got the pitchers. But every day, you go through thinking, what do I need? And you wish you had that exactly what you needed in, in that moment. So, But you can't make your decisions that way. Right now, he might be thinking, uh, I need some extra help. But as far as that goes, that was his thinking uh, all season long. He's had he's had 13, so that is why they've got the short bench and even shorter tonight. Ball one to Castro. Castro grounded into a force play, getting the ball to Alex Bregman in the second inning. This one skips away from Castro. Gregorius to second base. Curveball that lands just in front of Castro, but backhanding effort trying to pick it out of the dirt. Wild pitch number nine of the year for McCullers. See, Jason doesn't go, doesn't commit at all to blocking, just going to pick it, and you're going to lose that warm more often than not. In 
the third inning Gardner went from first to second on what was ruled a pass ball by Castro. But it's important for McCullers to keep that curve down which means sometimes bouncing it. And for a strike it's two and one we had a question on Twitter earlier tonight what's the best curveball you've ever seen would it be Daryl Kyle he certainly had one of them what do you think Ash. Well Daryl would be uh, at the top of a short list. Lance McCullers does have a very good one. Some guys would call it a slider because he throws it so hard but uh, Ron Guidry had a great slider. Mm -hmm. um, yeah let me think on that uh, Andy Messerschmitt. Oh yeah. He had the knuckle curve didn't he. Um, you know he may have Don Sutton Don Sutton had a very good curveball didn't throw it as hard as as the other guys we might be talking about Burt Blylevin yes. is always on the the that short list of guys who had the great hook. Yep. There you go Burt Blylevin Gidry Mariano, Mario Soto had the great change up just sold it all the way a little uh, screwball from Fernando Valenzuela and ability to paint things drove me nuts and I'm sure a lot of other guys you bet it did that's a walk to Castro now and that's the second of the night for McCullers was that a reference to me being nuts or, or? <laughs> no no not at all not at all Chase Headley comes up Headley's done some damage in this series He's driven in five this year against the Astros struck out in the third inning Headley had a three RBI game well he had a two RBI game last night and he drove in another Monday night so he's had a three RBI series Aaron Hicks is on deck at strike one McCullers is one of those pitchers who is sometimes at his best with men on base. For some that might imply that he's really good from the stretch maybe better than from the wind. For some it might say that the focus gets better. And for a strike. Oh and two. Last time out with that excellent game he pitched in the two to one win against the Angels. He threw one hundred five pitches. Correction 117 pitches. He struck out 10. Uh, but he sailed through the middle innings of that game. In the dirt. One and two to Hadley. And frequently Lance does not have that efficient a ball game, but it was very encouraging, of course, for A.J. Hinch to see him go into the ninth inning, but he had back to back walks to Calhoun and Trout and then came out of the game. Will Harris saved it and it was a two to one Houston win. Yeah that chance to work into the ninth when you're pitching well on a given night is is a chance to really become that full grown man on the hill. And I know that's what A.J. Hinch wanted. He wanted to sell Lance on the fact that hey you're the guy we believe in. You're the guy we're counting on not just tonight but for times to come. Right. Yeah that was the point that was emphasized in the press conference after the game. Ball keeps the count at two and two. For Lance, prior to tonight, he had worked 70 and a third innings this year. And a combination of hits and walks allowed, 110. That's a lot of traffic, but he's managed it well. That was wicked. Headley strikes out. That's number six. And we were mentioning the name Ron Guidry, former great Yankee left hander, not a big guy at all, but he could really get on top of a slider that he would just barrel in there, try to get it under the knees most of the time, a la Steve Carlton. Ron Guidry, that slight little Cajun fella, but boy, he was a dominant force for a while. He really was. And you know, he would be a big. Big force in that battle between the Yankees and Red Sox for years. Gator. 
Louisiana Lightning. Aaron Hicks grounded out earlier. Fouls that one away. Strike one. McCullers here at Minute Maid Park is eight and three with a 2.08 ERA. And the batting average against him in this ballpark is 211 in 18 career regular season starts. Larry Durker had 22 straight starts at home without allowing four runs. 1970 through 72. Roy Oswald had 19, 06 through 07. And McCullers is third on the Astros' all time list in terms of the most career starts at home without allowing four runs. Carl Warwick. Wants to know what you thought of Sandy Koufax's curveball. Me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we need to ask Carl on that. I, as a fan, as a youngster in the stands who was watching his veteran uh, older fellows on the field, I thought it was spectacular. That's a good one from McCullers for strikeout number seven. McCann hits home run number 15, but McCullers maintains the lead four to one through three and a half. Four to one. It's time to take a look at our Chevy Stro poll. Make sure to vote on our Twitter page, Root Sports SW. Who do you think should join Jeff Bagwell in the 2017 Hall of Fame class? Like what we did there? Is it Tim Raines, el eligible for the final time, longtime closer, Trevor Hoffman, Kurt Schilling, or Vladimir Guerrero? First year eligible for him. This is a fun one, guys. Good poll. Jake Marisnik batting for the first time in this game takes strike one. He took over for the injured Carlos Gomez, who left with a right hamstring problem. 210 for Marisnik, one homer, eight runs batted in for Jake. Up and in from Tanaka. The count is one and one. Seeing the name Tim Raines in his final year of the voting, he's a guy that and I've heard a lot of question marks. Is he? Is he a guy that should be in the hall? I think he is. Yeah, I think you're right. Headley throws to first. One out. And I think a lot of people, uh, some of the experts are weighing in on some of the uh, talk shows and TV shows about those others on that list. A lot of the longtime voters for Hall of Fame do not necessarily feel that those other guys uh, should be in. Vlad Guerrero viewed as a borderline guy. Uh, there are problems with PEDs with uh, Manny Ramirez. And a lot of people on Pudge Rodriguez are not too sure. Castro struck out his first time up. They strike one. Yeah you get through those years where the uh, the PEDs became pretty prevalent I think. 
it's it's tough to lay judgment fairly across there. It truly is. And just difficult to find out and use that as a voting basis. I think a lot of the writers are just kind of dismissing that whole issue and disregarding it now. One ball one strike. But that is seen by some as a boost to Jeff Bagwell's candidacy. The fact that writers are maybe saying uh, let bygones be bygones. Well I'm talking about those other guys if they're if they're okay. not seen as fit to to get a Hall of Fame vote that could be more votes for Jeff. Two balls and a strike. Well, we hope that's the case and yeah I fully believe Jeff will be in the Hall of Fame come next July. I have to agree with you. Line shot right field corner. Castro heads for second base. Hicks picks it up. Double number 13 for Jason. Much more aggressive at bat right there for Jason than the previous and some that we've seen recently. Swinging on the first two pitches in the strike zone. They hung this one out nicely. Astros getting some good swings tonight against Tanaka. That's hit number six. They've had hits in every inning. George Springer is 0 for 2. I don't think this is the velocity that Tanaka brought to the big leagues from Japan a couple of years back. Maybe hitting 89 as a top end tonight. That's ball one. The batting average against him for nine road starts coming into this one was 225. He had walked 11 and struck out 44 in 60 innings. And the Astros have collected six hits, including the two run homer by Colby Rasmus. Topped out at 93. Springer takes and it's 2 0 to George. Boy, now you wonder with this hamstring injury to Gomez and then Valbuena. I don't think AJ wants to be two men short going into Detroit, does he? I think going in there, one man short's tough. It is, you're right. George with a pass at that one, not a good swing. Goes to a 2 1 count. Gets a 2 0, maybe just guesses dead red and comes up way out in front. Yeah, it's it's permissible to try to nurse one injured player along for a few days, but two who can't run, that's a heavy burden. Popped up on the right side. Here's Castro coming behind to share it to share a calling. Two outs. By the way, Bronny, we kind of glossed over Carl Warwick's question about Sandy Koufax yeah. absolutely one of the great curveballs of all time yes and I didn't mean to imply that you no. had faced Sandy Koufax well, but I knew you had watched him as a fan I, I was feeling some heat admittedly but uh, you were what four or five years old well, no I was a little bit older than that okay. I, I don't want to run those kind of numbers by anybody but yeah Sandy was just one of the greatest we want to go way back we can talk about Juan Marichal's curveball and all sorts of things. Marwin Gonzalez is one for two. Marwin looks at ball one. Well, you know, when you deal with injured players this time of year, a Marwin Gonzalez is just worth his weight in gold, isn't he? He can play all these different positions. Plays him so well, and he's been swinging a lethal bat from both sides. I think he's uh, right now. I don't think he's in the plans to not be in the batting order. He's not uh, affording the manager the luxury of not playing him, is he? So if you're <laughs> wondering night by night, so who is going to get left out, assuming everybody's healthy? Right now, it doesn't appear to be Marwin. Adam Warren is getting loose for the Yankees in the pen, a sign that things are not right with Tanaka. In the air, and here's Castro in shallow right. 
to end it in the fourth. No runs a hit and a man left after four. Four to one Houston. As we look at Lance McCullers, what he's done with his distribution of pitches this season, the strikeouts have been a big part of what he's done to get outs. He gets ground outs at nearly the same rate, not nearly so many flyouts. And that surprises me a bit. A guy who throws hard will generally get a lot of fly ball outs, but he turns to the curveball so often and gets so many strikeouts with it, that tends to dominate his pitching performances. And he's not even really throwing the changeup anymore, but that occasional fastball will slip by. But again Lance McCullers just doesn't give up many balls in the air at least at this stage of his career. Four innings four hits one run allowed he's walked two and fans seven. Allowing the McCann homer in the fourth inning Gardner. Is the man in the box now as the fifth inning starts he is one for two got the infield hit. To a diving Altuve. And that one goes out of play. We have more nominees for great curveballs. Camilo Pasquale. Oh, yeah. Ted Williams said the most feared curveball in the American League for 18 years. His name was kind of a, associated with curveball for a long time. How about Jim Palmer? That over the top, very much Roy Oswalt like slow curveball. Excellent. Oswalt has been mentioned on Twitter. One ball, one strike. We have a lot of candidates. Uh, people have been asking uh, is Carlos Gomez being traded No, he left the game with an injury. <laughs> Seriously he did. <laughs> Wanted to although a lot of viewers might remember back to the Hunter Pence trade when he was playing right field in Milwaukee and he came off the field during that game and he had been traded so there is reason to be suspicious this time of year. Look it's happened we know about that but don't think that's the case right here. It's two and two. Somebody mentions Randy Johnson's name. Randy threw the slider and the splitter along with his great fastball. Now Billy Wagner had a real good slider. He tried to learn the curveball. It changed his arm slot, and everybody started hitting his fastball, and he had to drop back to his normal slot. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Very interesting. I was part of the coaching staff and working with Billy at the time. And he was bound and determined he wanted to come up with a curveball to throw a curve and throw it effectively generally you have to raise your elbow your throwing elbow. And that changed his slot and all of a sudden he was throwing 98 to 100 and guys were hanging out line drives. And I told him right away that I felt it was the arm slot that was betraying him and he turned it around and everything went right back to normal. So that ruined his curveball but it still yeah. worked for no well more curveball we didn't talk about it anymore <laughs> it wasn't a part of things. Billy had been a starting pitcher in the minors but never could really come up with with the three quality pitches to 
make that work in the big leagues and uh, I think the same could be said of Brad Lidge but they turned out pretty well in relief didn't they. Yeah and I, I think that sometimes gets overworked a little bit there are guys who have succeeded on great stuff and two pitches. Yes. Uh, I think it's a kind of a standard for guys that maybe are in the average to below average kind of category if you're going to succeed you need more pitches. Lance is throwing his curveball 49 percent of the time this year or breaking ball if you will because he has varieties of it and fastball 43 percent and then the change up 8 percent of the time. I'm not sure I've even seen enough of the change up to to go to 8 percent by the way shame on me Nolan Ryan also had a great curveball. Him out. Number eight. Greater coverage of baseball is brought to you by T-Mobile. Buyers or sellers, Ash? Yankees, White Sox, Royals, Mariners. You know the Yankees came into town two days ago. They were just a, a couple of games over 500. They're now four over and on the move. Winners of eight of ten. I don't think they're sellers right now. Although they have already made one sell, I think the White Sox should be and will be. Kansas City probably in that same category. I don't think Seattle can sell to their fans a sell off right now. They've uh, they've had an improvement year. Well yes. Ellsbury is 0 for 1 with a walk. Foul away. They strike one. I think in the Yankees case it makes sense to wait until the end of the week. They'll be in Tampa Bay this weekend. And see what their record is. The trade deadline will be next Monday afternoon August 1st. And if they do happen to hit the skids, maybe they do sell some pieces. Oh, and two. But if they stay in the race, I don't know that they should. No, I think that's exactly the way I would view it. My phone has not been ringing from any Yankees brass. <laughs> he struck him out. That's number nine. Hey, there's one last thing, or maybe just one thing to mention about trades. Yep. If you're thinking, fans, about what about this guy or that guy, and as we watch the brilliant curveball of Lance McCullers and the possibility of trades, consider is there anybody out there who wants that player? And that's always the you got to have two people working on a deal. Yes. Carlos Beltran. Ooh. Now that is a wicked, that's a slider type pitch. Yep. Ash, but what a pitch. And that's why for me, I to me it's kind of it's turned into semantics on Lance. I think he does have a curve and a slider. And frankly, I think Dallas Keuchel's in the same book. They both say they only throw one breaking ball, but they change the speeds on it. Those are two dynamic pitches here to get to 0 2 on Beltran. Ooh. There are plenty of major league hitters here in the last month that know the curveball is coming and can't hit it from Lance McCullers. The Angels certainly knew it was coming. Struck him out. He carved him up. Struck out the side. That gives him 10 strikeouts through the first five and a four to one Houston lead.
presented by Southwest Airlines. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. By Academy Sports and Outdoors, donating $100 for each Astros home run and $200 for each Correa home run to Houston Children's Charity. And by Toyota, let's go places. Colby Rasmus has gone places tonight. He snapped an 0-4-29, hit a two-run homer. The Astros lead it 4-1. to one. Jose Altuve steps up. He's one for two. Altuve backhanded. Chase Headley off balance throw. Altuve has another hit. Not going to get him. Put Manny Machado down there or the work from Alex Bregman the other night. You're just not going to get Altuve on that particular ball. Part of why he's able to put up the phenomenal numbers that he puts up. By the way, Brownie, I, sometimes players try to forget curveballs of the past. Dwight Gooden, Doc Gooden had yep. one of the game's great ones. He did. Carlos Correa up with an RBI single in the third inning is one for two. He made it two to nothing, Houston. Seven hits now. And it's ball one. Altuve had 140 hits through the team's first 99 games. That was a club record. The last major league player to do that through his team's first 99 games was Ichiro in 09. He had 145 that year. He just keeps cranking. One ball, one strike. Up to 90 now on the hitter, but still shy of the original fastball that Tanaka brought with him to the New York Yankees and I think he's paying the price for it a little bit. That's chop foul one and two. Carl Eason wants to know has a player ever been traded during a game to the opposing team. Yes. It has happened. One of the all time stories is Joel Youngblood. He played for two teams in one day. Doubleheader Reds and <laughs> trying to remember who was on. I think he was with the Cubs maybe and played an afternoon game and then got traded to the Phillies oh, and okay. flew there and played a night game. I remember or, him. Uh, maybe he was with the Reds in Chicago playing the Cubs. Yeah. You remember him where I was thinking I, when I hear his name I think Cincinnati Red. Yep. But I know he bounced a little bit. Uh, yeah, he was actually born in Houston, but he did move around. Yep. So yeah, that uh, that's a crazy day for a player. But uh, technically, if if it's during the game that he's traded, then he can't play for his new team. He's already played for one team and he's been traded and taken out of that game so he can't play for the other team during that game. So Youngblood had two hits in two cities for two teams in 1982 one off Ferguson Jenkins and the other off Steve Carlton. Wow. In the same day. <laughs> <laughs> That's a day. Hmm. Correa fouls it. Still wanted to. I was talking with one of the Astros players in the clubhouse today. He's not really focused in on trades at all. And I think a lot of players just block that out but the best they can anyway this time of year. But yet it is rather unsettling for players to hear these constant rumors you'd think. I think they just try to stay away from that don't they Ash? I think so. Some guys actually dwell on it. Uh, <laughs> there, there may be some players around that are hoping they get traded. I don't think that's the case with the Astros players. A lot of guys really like it here. In the dirt, and it's two and two. Julia has something for us. And we'll get to her after this at bat by Correa. A 
remember great teammate Joe Necro used to go around whispering as he'd walk by reporters whispering about deals that were not even close to reality <laughs> getting guys to write stuff. It was pretty funny. <laughs> hey did you hear about that. Yeah <laughs> there can be some levity <laughs> this time of year. Correa is down on strikes and we go to Julia. Has to be feeling pretty good as he comes up to the plate after this homer snapping that over 29 and during this stretch for him that's been so tough he's been working on his hands a lot this is a guy that move those hands up he'll move him down he's constantly trying to find the perfect slot that's good for his swing and when he gets it right he's almost this is AJ Hinch saying almost an auto homer pull side so for him and we've seen him get on these hot streaks that's what's working he finds he, he feels it and hopefully He's feeling it now. I can feel it for a while. He is a streaky player. One for two tonight. That is ball one. Here's another one for you on trades, Ash. May 30th, 1922, the Cubs won the opening game of a day night doubleheader against the Cardinals. One of the Cubs outfielders, Max Flack, went home to grab lunch. He lived three blocks from Wrigley. He returned to the Cubs clubhouse for the evening game to find out he'd been traded to the Cardinals for one of their outfielders Cliff Heathcott. The players literally traded jerseys and then played the night game. I thought you were going to say the Cardinals had a rule of no eating in between doubleheader <laughs> games. 2-0 the count. I bet he caught some flack for that. <laughs> oh yeah Max. Sure he did. Uh, by the way, he was the inventor of the jacket as well. Ash, the <laughs> black jacket. Three balls, no strikes. Cubs, by the way, won the doubleheader that day, in case you're interested at all. And we would assume not. One team swept, one lost both ends, and somebody had a split. Strike to Rasmus, that makes it 3 1. You think the Rangers are finished after making their deal today for Lucas Harrell and the lefty reliever from Atlanta Dario Alvarez that doesn't sound like the deal that closes out all needs for a club to me no. Well they played Joey Gallo last night he homered they just promoted him from triple A. They played jerks and pro far at shortstop last night. You don't suppose they're positioning those guys for scouts to watch for a possible trade do you three mm. two. Of course they've got to win the game and that's not you know you don't play around with that. Right. you have to be sure that you can win the game when you do these things right or have a good chance to win. Yeah it. I wonder about that positioning thing I doubt that a skipper would make that sort of a move in game right. But Gallo would be one of the targets that another team might have on a trade with the Rangers. Out to left center field Ellsbury. With the running catch on the track, two outs. Tonight's fan cam is presented by GulloAuto.com. So we look around and see some of the fans here at Minute Maid Park. Got some great crowds on the home stand. Yeah, Astros! Keep those Astros on top. Jeff Bagwell. And always plenty of Jose Altuve's around. A couple, couple of hits tonight. One dog for each hit. Well, there's that share to care raffle, 50 50 raffle. It's very popular here. And a lot of money's being raised for the Astros Foundation. Preston Tucker has walked and scored. He's also grounded out. Starlin Castro is playing in shallow right field. He looks at ball one. Texas leads Oakland three to two there in the bottom of the sixth now in Arlington. By the way we've seen a lot of names that uh, of guys that possess great curveballs and a lot of agreement going on. Chris Carpenter among them. Oh yeah. Another one. Foul away one and one. Yeah, we've acknowledged Daryl Kyle just one of the exceptional ones but yeah there are a lot of names that would fit in that category. Ian Desmond hit a two run homer to give the Rangers the lead. They're 
Now in the bottom of the six lefty Sean Manaya pitching for Oakland. Brownie I didn't realize we had already done 80s night that slipped by me this year but. Oh well apparently we did. Oh yeah they put our heads on other people's bodies that's good. That's what that is. That's exactly what that is pal. Unless something's changed since an hour ago. Two balls and a strike. Anthony Renato of Pittsburgh has homered at Wrigley Field. Oh no the pitcher for the uh, White Sox. And you see uh, Warren. Adam Warren has just rejoined the Yankees from the Cubs. It's 3-1. Well the uh, White Sox you know won the first two games from the Cubs they have a four game series in Chicago two at each ballpark. White Sox won the first two they already posed with the trophy for their uh, Chicago series after winning the second game last it, night. Is that one of those we already possess it so a tie we don't have to relinquish. <laughs> yeah, I think so. We're just keeping it. Ripped on a line and caught by Castro in right field. Well hit by Tucker no runs a hit and a man left after five the Astros lead the Yanks four to one. front of the Yankees and we just missed a chance to see Alex Bregman and get in his first major league hit and I know mom's really excited to see that first hit and you guys have had so much fun the past couple of days. This is Jackie Alex's mother and our Toyota time to play is you guys just enjoying the moment Bregman being here getting called up and then of course the standing ovation for him. What was going through you and Sam your husband's mind. It was so heartwarming to see how welcoming the fans were for Alex. I mean, you know, he hasn't really done anything yet for the team and yet they uh, seem to have adopted him and they already love him, which is, you know, as a parent, it's just so moving. I can imagine what it's like to sit in the seat too and watch him every time he comes up to bat. What are you feeling as it go up, so goes up to the plate? I'm sure that if it were me, I'd have butterflies and it's overwhelming, but uh, Hopefully having to play at LSU and at the College World Series in front of a lot of fans will help him to settle down quick and uh, I'm sure he's going to be fine. And you are from New York correct. This yeah. was your team growing up right. Well it was my team <laughs> not right. anymore. We have to make sure that you've not given anymore. up on those Yankees. <laughs> How many people are here. How many people have come out to see his make his debut. Oh, we had we had about 50 people from Albuquerque make the trip and then we saw so many LSU friends and uh, fans that we recognized from when he was playing co in college. Since you have been in town how has Alex been. How has he handled this. I think he's great. I mean he's just so excited to be here and and contribute to the team and help the team any way he can and I, I know that he will. 
to see him put on that Astros uniform. I know you've watched him put on a bunch of different uniforms coming up, but to see him wear that major league uniform, what was that moment like? To see him run out there and um, just be in, in, in white and have his socks showing, I love that look. I think, it, I think that it was probably a really proud moment for him. He's worked his whole life for this moment, and uh, I know that he's going to try his best and, and just, you know, be a great teammate. Thank you so much for the time, Jackie. Enjoy sure, the series, and we hope to see you around the ballpark a lot. Thanks. All right, guys, up to you. Thanks, Julia. Warren still warming up for the Yankees to share the batter. It's 1 0 after McCann grounded out to Altuve. Altuve was uh, being asked some questions by head athletic trainer Jeremiah Randall, and A.J. Hinch came out. Jose was not moving around very well in the bottom of the fifth inning. He got that infield hit. And there might be something going on with him. Evidently, there is. One ball, one strike. It's two and one. And the Astros are about a DEFCON nine right now for injuries on this club. You can't lose that guy at any time. Boy, he just kept chewing the nails during the conversation. Liner out to right field. Rasmus in. He got a good jump. Two outs. And it's Gregorius coming up next. He's one for two. Castro's on deck for the Yankees. They trail four to one here with two outs in the sixth inning. Gangster Baker wants to know in a suspended game. Do the same uh, two starters have to go the next day whoever was in the game when it was suspended can resume pitching but doesn't have to. Could that upset between start routines. Well it could but. It depends on the situation. Well. Having rosters intact was always the, the big issue and. Now you pick games up and guys that were not on a roster when a game may have started a month ago can participate in the extended version of that game. Exactly. Classic case in point uh, the game in the Astrodome when uh, Larry Durker had that grand mall seizure. It was against the Padres the game was suspended and resumed about a month later and both teams had different players on their roster than they did when they were playing that game. That's a fair ball up the left field line. Good jump over there by Tucker and he'll hold him to a single. He got over quickly near the line and Gregorius is two for three now. I'm not a fan of. Pitching into the shift. Uh, some people believe that. There's no need to chain alter the pitching but if you pitch a guy away while you're playing him to pull. His only option if he does put the ball in play is to hit it that other way. And he just chopped at it and got an opposite field hit. Hit number five for the Yankees Castro's the batter he's 0 for 1 with a walk. Told that David Carr had a great curve. <laughs> Not sure about the fastball though. There is ball one. <laughs> it's coming up shy late in the career, but here's that previous pitch. Fastball up and away. And again, you, some guys can reach out and turn that around and pull it, but the odds are you, your chances go the other way. Foul back. One ball, one strike. Well, when that uh, suspended game between the Astros and the Padres was resumed about a month after it was started. The Astros had an interesting tactic. They listed uh, some starting pitchers in uh, certain positions in the lineup, and then they replaced them with position players. They wanted to see who was going to be the Padres pitcher when that game was resumed, and they weren't sure. And then they filled in with position players. Fly ball out to right field. Rasmus waiting. And it's no runs a hit and a man left. Four to one Houston in the sixth.
Castro is out in front. Watch every out-of-market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices with MLB.TV Premium, which includes a free subscription to at Bat Premium. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Thank you, Julia. Here's Adam Warren coming in in relief of Tanaka. In 29 games, one as a starter with the Cubs. He was 3 and 2 with a 5.91 ERA. Reacquired in the Aroldis Chapman trade on Monday. And uh, he had been a Yankee who was traded to, to the Cubs. So now he comes back around. Yankees very happy to have him back. He was a valuable performer for them last year. One of those righties who statistically is performing well against left hand hitters. In 2015 with the Yankees he was seven and seven with one save a three point two nine ERA he worked one hundred thirty one and a third innings struck out one hundred four Alex Bregman's over one with a walk towering pop second baseman Castro in for it one out for Warren Houston Methodist brings us our league leaders we see what's going on around the league since May 1st the Astros on top in fact that's around all Major League Baseball 47 and 29 tied with the Giants are the Astros in that span that's a hundred win pace projected over the course of an entire season the Indians right behind Blue Jays and Dodgers as well and the Dodgers by the way have been making up some ground here recently on the Giants but the Astros have been playing despite the two losses here in the series very good baseball. Jake Marisnik grounded out in the fourth inning. Ken Giles is getting loose for Houston. That is strike one. Adam Warren was a fourth round draft choice by the Yankees in 09. Ground ball. Off the glove of Headley. Marisnik heads for second base. Gregorius tracks it down. There's a double. Sharply hit by Marisnik. Yeah, but turns out that he's in line to get some more playing time. Sure would be nice if this bat can come alive. That's his 10th double. Last year showed power. It hasn't been there this year, but this double comes in quite handy. Always fun to watch when he's on the bases. Jason Castro got a double of his own in the fourth inning. He's one for two. That's eight Houston hits now. Tanaka threw 94 pitches, 56 of them were strikes in five innings. He allowed seven hits, four runs, walking two, fanning four. He threw a wild pitch. Castro takes it. Ball one to Jason. It's quite a deal bringing Adam Warren back to the Yankees along with shortstop Labor Torres. He's 19 years old and he was the centerpiece of the deal. Outfielder Billy McKinney and outfielder Rashad Crawford also coming from the Cubs in exchange for Chapman. Here's Marisnik going to third. The throw is there and they get him. Brock stealing from two to five. Two outs. Yeah, just not a good choice. It's all you can say on this one. If you're going to run for third base, you've got to know you've got it. Needed that retractable hand right there. Yep. Fourth time he's been caught stealing in 10 tries. One and one on Castro now. Foul ball one and two. Aroldis Chapman met with the media yesterday in Chicago. And now that he's come back to the Cubs, the Yankees have lost their closer, but they have their original closer back, Andrew Miller, still. They still have Dellen Batances. And they may get Chapman back as a free agent. However, the Cubs have to be awfully thrilled that they have him, at least for the next couple of months. Lined out to left, Gardner. 
No runs a hit nobody left after six it's four to one Houston. Hit a solo homer in the fourth for the Yankees run. But their top three hitters have been held to a one for eight night with a walk. Colby Rasmus hit a two run homer in the third. His first hit since July 5th. That snapped an 0 for 29 for Colby. Lance McCullers has left the game now after six innings. He ties the season high with 10 strikeouts. He allows five hits in one run, walking two, throwing 91 pitches, 62 for strikes. And Ken Giles is in the game. Another strong outing for Lance McCullers and yeah I does leave you wondering right now what has taken him out of the game Ken Giles see the overall numbers that ERA has been getting better and better seven games here in the month and the opponent's batting average at 130 interesting number on Ken Giles over the last 30 games that he's pitched in 181 total sliders thrown and he's only yielded two hits on those sliders so that's been a very effective pitch. Well, the Yankees have been mystified by the breaking stuff of McCullers. They could be in for more of same very soon. Chase Headley has struck out twice. The infield playing him to pull as is the norm. Ball one for Giles. Giles pitched in the Angels series four days ago, working one hitless inning and striking out three. That liner goes foul. One ball, one strike. That was in the 7 to 2 Houston win Saturday night over the Angels. Colin McHugh got the victory in that one. Will Harris was telling me tonight the guys in the bullpen. Pretty good shape right now. Nobody's all that worn out. Two and one. I bet you wouldn't hear that from a lot of bullpens around baseball. You probably would not. Giles is averaging 12.48 strikeouts per inning, per nine innings, rather. That's eighth best per nine in the American League on relievers. Headley swings over the top of a breaking ball and it's two and two. Giles with that ERA 4.08 that is his lowest of the season. Had a rough start to the year he gave up uh, a run on opening day on a Gregorius homer at Yankee Stadium two more runs on a Teixeira home run his next time out he gets a strike out there. One down on the 11th punch out of a Yankee tonight. One of the oddities on Ken Giles is in his previous years with the Phillies that small ballpark he did not yield many long balls. Yes it is. Well spotted on the heat here. 
heat that can get around 100 miles per hour. We haven't seen it yet from him this year. He's been around 97 or so. Aaron Hicks is 0 for 2. Fouled away. Strike one to Hicks. They occasionally get that toe in the hot tub at about 99 this year. Well, that'll warm you up in a hurry. It'll get you there. Luis Severino is warming up. Oh, and two. Linda Carnegie caught us on one about the uh, Cubs playing a day night doubleheader 1922. They didn't have lights then, so that must have been uh, a misnomer. By the way, there's that slider that has only been touched up for a couple of hits over the last 30 games. 30 Giles appearances. Struck him out. Big punch out night for Astros pitching. That's number 12. And for Lance McCullers, who got 10 of those strikeouts, third outing now in the last five games for Lance with 10 strikeouts. Yeah, this slider is just not getting hit. Gardner is one for three. Gilbert Fuentes wants to know are umps in play? Has that ball last inning hit the ump? Is it dead? Not sure what he means by that, but uh, sometimes they are in play. It's ball one. For instance, if uh, a ground ball passes by an infielder and hits the ump behind him, and then ricochets on out into the outfield, that ball is playable. But uh, if they're in foul territory, no, they're not in play. One ball, one strike. Well, baseball has so many rules, though. It can be confusing, can it, at times? Well, take a, a strike three, a swing and a miss, or a pitch called a strike that a catcher whiffs on and it hits the umpire. You don't have a man at first base. Now that ball's in play. That's another point. You're right. Two and one. Severino with Mike Harkey, the bullpen coach. Well, where's that pitch? Really good question. Three balls and a strike. We're about to see. Yeah, that for me, and you disagree if you want to, but that's a strike. I was looking at something else. Bouncer to Altuve. On over to first. Giles does a 1 2 3 job in the seventh inning. 4 to 1 Astros.
one Astros and it's time to reveal the winner of our Chevy Stroke poll. I want to thank everybody for voting in our poll today. Who should join Jeff Bagwell in the 2017 Hall of Fame class? He said Kurt Schilling, 30% of the vote. It was tight though. He edged out Trevor Hoffman. Is that the way you thought it would go, Julia? No. I wasn't really sure how that one would go, so. Well, I wasn't either. It's, it's interesting. To, that's why we do it, I guess. Right? Yeah, that's why we have polls. <laughs> we learn something every night. You're right. Luis Severino comes out of the Yankee bullpen. He's pitcher number three of the night for Joe Girardi. In seven starts with the Yankees, 0 and 6 with a 7.46 ERA, and then 10 starts at AAA Scranton, much much better. Recall Monday to be in the bullpen now. He was a part of the original starting rotation for New York. I've wondered if Kurt Schilling might not have talked him. Self right out of some of the votes that the writers might have for him. Yeah, that's a fair thing to wonder. George Springer takes, and there's strike one. He is 0 for 3. Adam Warren in one inning allowed one hit, no runs, had no walks, and no strikeouts. Oh and two for Severino, throwing 96 in relief. I think that snuck up on George too. He was all on his back foot as he Finish that swing. One ball, two strikes. So maybe Severino is one of those guys, along with Adam Warren, who steps up now in the absence of her oldest Chapman to set up Atansis and Miller. Luke Gregerson warming up for Houston. That's a close one. Yeah, I think George might have gotten away with one. Two and two. He's gotten a lot more quiet about swings here. On this home stand, uh, just recently it gotten hot when he started letting it fly a bit. In the dirt for a ball. Full count to George. Oh, no. Oh. Home plate umpire took the call. Woo. And I think he made a mistake with that one. Yep. That's, That's not, not one for the home plate umpire to take. This is very borderline and could be called by somebody, but. I would say let the uh, the first base umpire make that call. George just smiled, took off. Now he'll let it out. Marwin Gonzalez is one for three. Severino delivers. There's strike one. In the rule book, rule 509 F talks about umpires. Plug your ears. A fair ball touches a runner or an umpire on fair territory before it touches an infielder, including the pitcher, or touches an umpire before it has passed an infielder other than the pitcher. Runners advanced if forced. In other words, if you're the runner at first base and that takes place, you advance to second. Yeah. Foul back. If a fair ball touches an umpire working in the infield after it has bounded past or over the pitcher it is a dead ball in that situation. If a batted ball is deflected by a fielder in fair territory and hits a runner or an umpire while still in flight and then caught by an infielder it shall not be a catch but the ball shall remain in play. All of you students open your eyes now. now let's go back to baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I was just picturing everybody sitting there thinking that through. Well, we could see some eyes glazed over yeah. out there. <laughs> 35,186, the paid attendance. What was that now? Well, let's just wait yeah. until it happens. See, that's the, the one under that F column we were talking about <laughs> some time back. Jose Altuve is two for three. In the air foul for Teixeira. And in the seventh inning, it's no runs, no hits, and we move to the eighth, four to one, Houston.
glove, so I gotta find a glove to use. Whose glove did you use? It was Marwin's, or no, it was uh, Valbuena's, but uh, via Chris Carter. It was a Chris Carter first baseman's glove, so I gotta, I gotta send him a text and thank him for the, uh, the nice break-in uh, job on his glove. Yeah, I felt like I wasn't wearing anything out there because I didn't have my gear on. <laughs> I think it was the first time I've worn a baseball hat on a field during a game in pro ball. That was Geico quote of the day, Jason Castro. It was a little weird for all of us, I think, to see Castro out there with a baseball cap on at first base. Uh, and You know, guys, I watched that unfold as Trey Hillman, the bench coach, made his way down to Castro. Castro's smile was so big, and he said, I got this, I got this, as he went out to first for the first time in his major league career and did a nice job. Ellsbury with a grounder. Luke Gregerson in the game. He gets a one pitch out on Ellsbury with Altuve throwing him out. Giles had a one two three seventh inning with two strikeouts Gregerson worked a Monday night an inning and a third giving up one hit and no runs. Tell you where that can get dicey for a guy like Castro going to play first base. Pop fly goes down the line you've got to take that 90 foot sprint to a, to a baseball back to home plate and it's a very different look there are some plays that you're just not prepared for. Carlos Beltran is 0 for 3. Strike one for Gregerson. Luke only threw 12 pitches Monday night and getting four outs. Altuve gets a two hopper. Two outs. Here are your quick and loans rocket arms on the American League strikeout leaders in relief. Dylan Batances. Who we've seen with the Yankees, he is mighty tough. He leads it. Andrew Miller also in that Yankees pen. Michael Feliz third on the list, and Brad Brock also right there. Very good arm from Brock. So yeah, you're looking at the really good arms, and that's why teams love those big arms in the back end of the bullpen. But that top three relief strikeout leaders in this ballpark. Brian McCann homer to left center in the fourth inning for the Yankees run. He's one for three. What's really an appealing feature to many fans in this ballpark is the left field scoreboard wall. And there's an Oakland four on that scoreboard in the top of the eighth inning and it's in yellow. And that means Oakland has scored four runs and is still batting. With a six to three lead now at Texas. Coco Crisp hit a two run homer in the eighth. As Oakland A's have been playing well. See recent series with the Astros out in Oakland. Yes. Oh and two. The fans who were here in the 04 and 05 seasons got to watch as those numbers were put up in the heat of pennant races both those years. It was really dynamic as they enjoyed the action they were seeing and then glanced out at the scoreboard and checked scores of other games of teams in the pennant races. A lot of fun. Texas uh, had a three to two lead until Oakland came up in the fourth. Chris Davis has hit two homers for the athletics that gives him twenty five for the year. Crisp's home run was his ninth. And Davis connected off the starter you Darvish and also uh, the reliever Bush is in the game. Manaya went six two thirds for Oakland. Strikeout of McCann. One two three eight for Gregerson a four to one lead for Houston.
Astros LLC and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Houston Astros LLC. 4-1 to lead for the Astros. Yankees have won the first two games of this series. The Astros trying to grab this one before moving along to Detroit for the weekend. They bat in the eighth inning and it's Carlos Correa leading it off. He's one for three an RBI single in the third. He came home on a two run homer by Colby Rasmus in that three run third inning. The Astros are shooting for win number fifty five. They're fifty four and forty six. One hundred games in. Ball one to Correa. They're 11 and 22 against the Yankees. Four. First pitch. Sorry, Bronnie. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. What would you say about that first pitch? Oh, I was just going to say that first pitch appeared to be kind of in that high end of the strike zone and one to tee off on if you wanted to quickly add a run. All right. We will uh, take a look at it. There you go. Yeah, to me, that was. First pitch heaven if if you're looking for the heater on that first one. Yeah. So uh, 62 games remaining including this one. 54 wins in the bank for the Astros. What are you thinking uh, the magic number is for wins to make the playoffs. Oh, it's really tough. I, you know I kind of fall into that camp that says the better option might for the Astros be to win the division. And that uh, depends on not only how the Astros play but how the Texas Rangers play. Yes. But I would think it's going to take a, a little higher number to get in this year than we saw last year which was 86 a year ago. I think uh, around 89 90 might be required this year. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking today earlier. The way Toronto and Boston are playing right now. Baltimore. Three two of course all those clubs will play each other too. So. That's true. But nonetheless, uh, you know, Boston could make an acquisition through a trade. They've already made one. Toronto, I could see Toronto making a deal. They've already made one. Certainly could. Correa draws the leadoff walk. Our Lexus defensive ratings as we look around the outfield for the Yankees. And uh, one of the guys that's not out there tonight, you'll see, oh, he's actually not on the list, but Brett Gardner. Never known for a great throwing arm, and yet he throws okay. He'll hit the cutoff man. Sam for Jacoby Ellsbury in center field, both good outfielders. Aaron Hicks, maybe the best outfielder they have, and a guy who throws extremely well in right field. Uh, got a couple of guys that you have the coin flip on that you might challenge with the run of game. Ball one to Colby Rasmus. Two run homer in the third for Colby. He takes it and it's one and one. Danny A wants to know can the manager tell an umpire before the game that he'd like an appeal on all check swings? No. <laughs> Can't put it on autopilot. You got some really bad rules as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Alex Bregman with the skipper. And the throw goes to first. <laughs> I'm trying to picture the manager that would say, no, you know what? I'd rather go ahead and I uh, just tell you when I'm appealing. Uh, yeah. If you had the other option. <laughs> just assume I yeah. want to challenge everything that you think I should challenge. Learning experience, by the way, right there, Brownie. Very much so. Great instructional time during a game. One and two. Did you ever get in that seat next to the manager during a game when he was talking and instructing you? Not when I was doing well, I know that. Okay. <laughs> there were some times when. Uh, there was some encouragement about probably pitch calling by some guys that had no business discussing pitch calling there. I've, I've kind of I've tainted that one a little bit haven't I? A little bit. Yeah I actually had a manager at one point say he was going to call pitches one inning later and about seven eight runs on the board later <laughs> it went back in in uh, my hands. And <laughs> That's good stuff. You know that's that's pure bad luck on his part but but I loved it. 
Strikeout. That's number three for Severino. Oh, this fastball is getting by the guys. Yeah, I think relief might be the way to use him, at least for this year. The extra miles per hour compared to starting. Tucker is 0 for 2 with a walk. Nick Cordova wants to know how many votes did Bagwell get this year for Hall of Fame? He was 15 votes short of election, which is 75% of the total. Well, we don't have an actual number for you, but he needed 15 more. Historically, a guy that's 15 votes shy that following year will typically get in, right? Yes. I think every time. Maybe not always the very next year, but every time somebody's been that close, he has made it. 315 votes was the exact total. So we needn't move on, then you're saying? We need to move on. We just need to make this thing official. <laughs> Upstairs to Tucker, ball one. Daniel Jameson uh, wanted to know what we thought of the fine of Yasiel Puig. Didn't know about it until he brought it up for wearing uh, a shoes. Uh, his baseball shoes were honoring Vin Scully. What's that all about? It's only Scully's final year after maybe the most legendary career as a oh, broadcaster. Yes. One and one. I thought it was very nice of Puig. I don't know. It was there actually a fine? Uh, they were not considered to be uniform shoes. Okay. So they didn't fit with the Dodger uniform. So I've seen what I have perceived to be numerous times that guys on various teams have not seemed to wear the uniform shoe. We hear he hasn't been fined yet. I think the the league, Major League Baseball, would would do well to not fine him for that. Well, what were they? White bucks? It might have actually. I'm trying to remember if it was on the the white uh, white shoe thing the other day. Did that was that around Major League Baseball? Um, that was around the majors, yes, to honor Griffey. Yeah, and I well. I don't know if it was that day but I did okay. see the shoes and they just had a nice little thing that you wouldn't even see from the, the second row on Vince Gully. OK. Sammy wants to know why shift when a pitcher throws mid to high 90s. Isn't it more likely the batter will be late and go opposite field. Actually studies have shown no. Talking about that the other day with Albert Pujols. Yeah, it was kind of surprising to some of us when when all the shifting started a few years ago, Ash, to learn that with all the data, if a guy's a pull hitter, he's going to pull 95 miles per hour a lot more than you think. That doesn't surprise me. It's the intent to to pitch toward the shift that that to this day. Doesn't settle well for me. Grounded foul. I think if you pitch into the shift, you even enhance your chances above what they may be right now. Yasiel Puig uh, has been threatened with a $5,000 fine if he wears these Finn Scully shoes again. Apparently, uh, Scully's face is on the shoe. Who threatened him, Vin Scully? Um, <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, that's a beauty. Ground ball. <laughs> There's Castro on to second. Gregorius on to first. Four six three double play. We move to the ninth inning. Four to one Houston.
Lines, transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. And by Lexus, the new 2016 Lexus ES and ES Hybrid. It's next level luxury. Astros lead it four to one. There's a catch of a foul ball. The Yankees will be coming up the ninth inning against closer Will Harris, who's warming up right now. And there we have something with Vin Scully. Yeah, there's his face. Win one for Vin. That's the Asiel Puig cleat for which he might be five. But we have our own version of something here with Julia wearing the new CC Hooks hat for the rest Aren't of the broadcast. Sharp? Yeah, that is very, nice. very good. Yeah. Where did you get that, by the way? I got it from the Hooks. Nice. Have you got a taco version that you can wear? No, not yet. I got to reach out to Fresno. <laughs> I need that taco hat. Mark Teixeira is one for three. Will Harris throws. There's strike one. Harris is in a save situation here. Will is 10 for 11 in saves. He goes with a curve and gets strike two. I want to see Julia wear some of her high heels and have a little Bill Brown on the side. Oh, please. <laughs> No fines will follow. That's coming. I have a We're question. We're going to work on that. I have a question for you, Julia, after this next pitch. One and two. Did you see the uh, footage? Uh, apparently, the Corpus Christi Hooks got into it with the Texas Rangers Double A club. I heard about this. Frisco, you did. It's pretty ugly out there. Somebody charged the mound, and yeah, they got after each other. So the rivalry extends to different levels of the organizations. Did he go? Nope. Call was made by Mike Estabrook, and it's two and two. Will Harris said he's had plenty of rest since the All Star game. No problem. Feeling good. And he thinks that is generally the situation for the entire bullpen. Grounder goes foul. There's the numbers on Will Harris 42nd appearance now just one and one that's the way you want it to be keep that ERA down low opponents batting average same kind of story slugging percentage against him at 270 that? That, that is amazing it really is well remember he didn't go give up an extra base hit for 37 games in a row struck him out and now that is seven straight retired by Astros relievers. Miles Gregerson and Harris. And I believe that was, if I'm not mistaken, that was our fault when he did give up the extra base hits. So. Yeah, we jinxed him, yes, yeah. it was. We heard about it on Twitter. You're right. Gregorius is two for three. Art Seaberger on Twitter tonight says, I wear your likeness on my Johnston and Murphy's on all sales appointments. I get no <laughs> fines. Unfortunately, no sales either. <laughs> <laughs> That's strike one. Good spot over the inside corner. Astros bullpen with a 3.01 ERA, really in good sync right now. Brownie, I'm glad somebody's seeing it as it should be. <laughs> one and one. Major League ERA rankings since May 1st. Houston bullpen 2.46, best of the majors since May 1st. Astros team ERA overall best in the majors since May 1st 3.39 one and two Astros on deck that's what colors went the first six only five hits in one run number 43 had another excellent night of it that's 19 starts for him at home and he's never given up as many as four earned runs in any of those. Mm. Tying Roy Oswalt for the second longest home streak behind Larry Durker's 22. Two and two. Yeah, I don't know about all those numbers like that, but it sure looked good to the eye. Just a dominant Lance, and, and he was right in the strike zone from the get go tonight in that first inning. He had a 1 2 3 first inning. Tuba gives Chase Correa's back for it. And 
handles it two out. Jack in the box now takes us inside the box score. Look a little what the Astros have done the breakdown on the season first 24 games of the year that's the first month seven and 17 and the numbers on that left column will tell you maybe why they were that poor. Next 76 games awfully good and all the numbers kind of come in line there and so that's what you're hoping the Astros can do throughout the remainder of the year maybe even tune those numbers up a bit. Darlin Castro is 0 for 2 with a walk. <laughs> There's Paul one. We do get some interesting messages during games. What'd you get this time? People are having some fun with it. Oh, just different shots of people on their shoes. And yeah. It's a, it's a topic tonight. In for a strike, one and one. Meanwhile, the scoreboard shows Oakland six, Texas three, going to the bottom of the ninth. If the Astros win and the Rangers lose, the margin goes back to two and a half games for Texas over Houston. Bouncer goes foul. Ryan Madsen's in the game for the Athletics. See where Chris Davis went deep twice in that game for the A's. It'd be interesting to see if they are sellers. There are rumors that Josh Reddick is attracting some interest from the Cubs. Rich Hill may go somewhere. Two and two, although Hill, a rental player, he's had a very good year, but twice he's had injuries. Most recently a blister, and before that a groin. Even if you were thinking of Rich Hill beyond this year, he's 36 years of age. Yeah. So you have to use caution. 35,186, the paid attendance. The Astros trying to salvage one game of this three game series. And they do it with Harris striking out Castro. Big strikeout night for the Astros, a total of 15 in the game. Ten for McCullers, two for Giles, one for Gregerson, two for Harris. Harris getting the save. McCullers going to six and four with a win. And the Astros have won for the 55th time. Four to one, Houston tonight.